it's a time for another update on the Almost Aviation Twin Otter cockpit and you probably notice I've changed a few things back all these panels I moved around up here I didn't like that I couldn't really live with the autopilot up there and so I've taken that away and I've returned the Elite radios and the start panel to their original positions now that means I've got no autopilot panel up there so I've had to construct a new one which is down here on the right hand side close to where the autopilot indicators are going to be displayed. Now if you were to look at this close up it's not done to the same standard as the rest of the panels it's not made of acrylic it's made of MDF covered in sticky plastic but with the same components in labelled up with Dymo <laughs> labels um, I used black buttons for most of these and then I discovered I couldn't see them in the dark so I've stuck these fluorescent labels on them so it looks a little bit like an explosion in a sweet factory at the minute but um, works pretty good and it's much better having it in that position than it was up there the other thing is I've lost the fire panel that's no great loss so I'm probably not going to reconstruct that I've also lost another couple of miscellaneous buttons which I'm going to have to replace auto feather arm is is also on that old panel and what else I think the track IR centre um, this is the panel the one thing that I'm kind of regretting having to do with that for now is the speakers I've got two speakers mounted behind these little grills here if you look on the back of this you can see them and I was using those for the ATC comms and uh, there's a volume control on there I really miss that so I'm gonna I'm gonna restore that I've already put a volume control knob in preparation over here on the left hand side of the panel now I've got to decide whether to actually take these speakers out and remount them or to buy a new set these were really cheap uh, USB powered speakers they're kind of hard to get hold of at the minute but I think I can get them on, on Amazon I don't want to take this apart because I might put this on eBay or something. Someone will probably buy this. Um, once I've reassured myself I'm not going to reuse it. So that's uh, a fairly obvious in your face change. Another thing which you may or may not see on this video, or you will see it, I've put the SciTech radio up here overhead, which I think is a good position to have it mounted. So I can use that for COM2 nav to ADF and so on. What else? The weather radar I've mounted up here where the VR Insight multi panel used to be. That's, I haven't got that plugged in at the minute so I can't demonstrate it. Interestingly enough, I'm using the RXP, Reality XP WX500 weather radar, which, which isn't all that good to be honest. I've not really used it since buying it very much because although it looks nice it doesn't really seem to accurately portray the weather <laughs> but uh, what's interesting is just this morning I got an email from Rex Game Studios saying that they've released a, a weather radar product which I think has got pretty much the same controls that I've got on my control panel so I might have a look at getting that and seeing how that performs what are the changes? well the big obvious change is I have my panels powered up and my instruments mounted. I've got still not quite a full set of instruments here but got pretty much all we need to fly the aircraft. We've got the engine gauges over here, we've got all the main instruments, we've got all the main indicators as well. So what we've got the the main annunciator panel so if I fiddle with the generators, if I turn the generators off I get the indicators there. What else can I show you with that? If I turn off a fuel pump, we get a warning. Turn on the backup fuel pump, that, that responds as we'd expect. We've got uh, auto feather arm, that's on a temporary button up here because, as I was saying earlier, I've lost the, the proper button off the overhead and so on. So we've got um, everything we need. I'm still playing with the layout and the sizes of these instruments. Obviously this is still kind of 
a bit of a compromise compared to a real twin otter panel. The real twin otter panel will be much bigger, you see a kind of curved shape. So we've got to squeeze everything in here. But it's pretty fantastic flying this around with real instruments. And I have to say these instruments are just beautifully done. I mean I should give credit here to Russ Barlow from Sim Innovations. He's I mean it was his idea to do this in the first place and he's worked tirelessly I have to say on making these instruments not only accurate and usable but they just look perfectly in keeping with the original virtual cockpit instruments as well. Uh, we're not quite done we've still got I mean some there's still some wrinkles in how some of these things work in particular the dependencies when some of the electrical systems are compromised you know getting the instruments to respond appropriately is a little bit of a challenge. I think the most important thing that's still missing is the fuel gauges. We're going to have those probably over on the left hand side with the engine gauges as well. We've got plenty of real estate left on this this monitor. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail here about the instruments and I'm not going to fly it around in this video just yet un un until it's finished but then I'll obviously be doing some kind of more detailed look at the the new cockpit in flight and possibly something about Air Manager itself as well and just something about how these instruments work and and how you can tinker with them behind the scenes. I've tried to finish you know the dash in a, a kind of uniform way so plugging the gaps and things we've got a filler panel here which I think I mentioned before I've got the the dash has been recut so that the monitor can fit in there I've tried to fill the gaps here so there isn't anything too obtrusive and I've got a pan panel here down at the bottom with the yoke coming through a hole there so you can't actually see the body of the iris yoke either. That's, that's easy to do with the iris yoke because the handle is detachable with just a, an allen key. You know to do that with something like a Cytec yoke um, or I'm not sure about the Elite yoke, I've never tried dismantling that. It's kind of difficult to get to get it to poke through a hole. <laughs> but anyway, that hides some of the um, workings and the wiring down below. And something you can't see is I've remounted my fuel control panel. It's like a refueling panel. Which is not strictly anything to do with the Twin Otter per se. But that's down at the bottom left. So I'm pretty much back to where I was, but with instruments. Um, again, when I do this in more detail in flight, I'm going to talk about the Track IR. I've been playing with the Track IR. The view that you see now is essentially the view that I'm flying with most of the time. The Track IR is still in play, mainly because I want to be able to look right and left. And you've still got that six degrees of freedom, so you can move forwards and backwards, sideways. Um, but I've, I've limited the panning up and down, or the pitch axis of the Track IR, if you like because you don't need it, you don't need to be looking down in the virtual cockpit and also when you do move your head you don't want it to be padded up and down yeah I think I'll do for now